Another important demand side policy is the monetary policy. Monetary policy is used to manage aggregate demand and this management of aggregate demand can result in uh, macroeconomic goals of uh, unemployment, uh, GDP, current account uh, and even inflation to be managed in an economy. Now, let's talk about the tools of uh, the monetary policy. The first tool of monetary policy is interest rate. Interest rate are the cost of borrowing money and the return on lending money. And uh, we can use the symbol R for interest rate. If the interest rate goes up, uh, we can say this results in the cost of borrowing to basically in an economy go up because higher the interest rate higher will be the the cost to borrow money at the same time the incentive to save will also go up because now the banks are offering a higher return on lending money both of these aspect will mean that the consumption will fall in an economy at the same time investment will fall why would consumption fall because now it's very expensive to borrow and people are also saving and at the same time firms are finding it uh, expensive to borrow and therefore they'll cut down on investment and this will result in ad curve to shift backward so uh, one tool that we use is interest rate in order to manage your aggregate demand at the same time if the interest rates are going down we can say the ad curve can go up now the other aspect we can sort of talk about is uh, money supply money supply is simply what we say uh, the total amount of money in an economy and this can be taken as notes and coins or any easily accessible accounts like your uh, current accounts uh, in the banks which do not give you interest now we find uh, money supply to be a little difficult to manage in an economy and that's why government normally use interest rate as a tool but still money supply is a tool of uh, managing because when the money supply goes up uh, we can say that there is higher liquidity in the economy and this higher liquidity in the economy may translate into the idea that uh, more money is being printed and therefore more cash available suddenly and this higher cash available means that uh, uh, your interest rates will go down because people no longer want to borrow as they were borrowing before and uh, also that means that when the interest rates are going down and when the money is available for people to spend then the uh, economy will find the spending or ad to go up uh, the rise in money supply is also called uh, quantitative easing in an economy because we are easing the the money supply in an economy on the other hand if the money supply goes down we will have an opposite effect because when the money supply goes down suddenly there is lower liquidity people will need to borrow money and therefore this borrowing of money will basically result in an upward pressure on interest rate and this uh, may in turn cause uh, ad curve to shift backward and uh, therefore the economy will find uh, money supply going down uh, to have uh, interest rate going up and therefore ad to to fall another tool that we'll look at is what we call uh, credit regulation credit regulation is simply qualitative control that government may sometimes put uh, or central bank may sometimes put on um, sort of consumer credit uh, and they make it difficult for people to borrow money for example uh, because higher the regulation higher will be the rules and regulation for borrowing and therefore it will be easier to manage aggregate demand because when there is less lending or borrowing automatically people will not have money to spend and therefore ad may fall so that's another tool where the government is using uh, rules and regulation to control aggregate demand and that's part of the monetary policy let's look at how the expansionary and contractionary monetary policy work uh, the central bank of a country can use uh, expansionary uh, monetary policy when they want to increase aggregate demand on the other hand if they want to decrease aggregate demand they can use contractionary monetary policy so when you use expansionary monetary policy we may cut down interest rates and a fall of interest rate result in uh, consumption to go up and investment to go up because uh, now the incentive to save is going down and also the cost of borrowing is going down so the ad curve will shift to the right and this rise in ad curve can cause therefore 
the GDP to go up, the unemployment to go down in an economy. But at the same time, we may also see the price level to go up. So if you can see from the diagram, when there is a decrease in our interest rate, the AD curve, let's say AD is AD naught and let's say aggregate supply curve is AS naught and currently the price level is P naught in the economy and GDP is Y naught and let's say the government decides to reduce interest rate that will cause consumption to go up, investment to go up and therefore AD to rise and that's called our expansionary monetary policy because the GDP or output in an economy goes up and this in turn means you will see GDP to rise, unemployment to also fall, but at the same time because the price level is going up, you might see inflation to go up or price level to go up in an economy. And if this rise in GDP also causes people to buy more imports, then we can also argue this that there is going to be a, a rise in your current account uh, deficit because now there is more imports to be bought as compared to as compared to before so there is a rise in your current account deficit that can happen so we can say expansionary monetary policy can achieve our tools of rising uh, of increasing GDP and uh, reducing unemployment on the other hand if you uh, decrease interest rates we will see contractionary sort of monetary policy to happen where the AD will fall as consumption and investment will fall and that can be useful if we want our price level to go down or if we want to sort of uh, control our current account uh, sort of in an economy but at the same time because the AD is going down unemployment can go up uh, I'm using UE for unemployment and GDP to also go down in an economy so not all goals will be achieved when we are using contractionary monetary policy.